Scott holding on for dear life and not really able to get the lift that he wanted, but all that speed automatically translates into some distance. Smith will have one more attempt in that first jump for Scott. Just over 230 feet, 236 the official distance by ski fly standards, fairly short. There is Jarrett Llewellyn next to him, Bruce Neville. Both these guys have won the first stop here in Orlando. Neville back in 97. Jarrett won Orlando in 2000. Smith now, jump number two. You can see the ski chattering a bit. There is a breeze. It is a headwind, which these jumpers prefer. Ski splitting, getting a little bit wide. Definitely more lift on this jump. Can he ride it out? Yes, he's back up. But not happy, Doug. Frustration a little bit. He caught the wind a little better this time, though. Well, and it is a headwind, which is what these jumpers prefer. Coming in with this speed, with these large skis that they get up on top of that breeze, the aerodynamics come into play, and they literally float for as long as they can without outrunning the boat. Smitty's first jump was 236. This one definitely longer, 245. So that's the final score and the best score of the day for Scott Smith as we're underway in Orlando. And a big Mastercraft Pro Water Ski Tour welcome to all of you to the Orlando Water Sports Complex. Today, the Inmar Vortec Open. We're ski flying. We begin the 2001 Pro Water Ski Tour season with beautiful conditions here in Orlando, Florida. Sun is shining, a little bit breezy though. Hi everyone, I'm Doug Dunbar. This wind can get gusty at times today. That'll present a challenge to our jumpers and we are ski flying to open up the season. That means a faster boat speed approaching 45 miles an hour. The longer jump and the longer rope. That means distances approaching 300 feet. It will be exciting. And last year's Pro Tour champion, Freddy Krueger is here. He's made the final. Of note, though, a big name that did not make the final and for a big reason in qualifying. With more on that story, here's the coach, Dave Benzel. Thanks, Doug. One of the biggest thrills in jumping is the distance that you travel, but the scariest part is when you travel it on your face. And yesterday, Scott Ellis took a brutal crash. In fact, I can see you're moving slowly today. Uh, what happens when, you, when you're up that high in the air and coming down? You really, you, you kind of, you almost have to relax and spot your land or spot your crash point where you're gonna hit the water and just make sure that your skis are behind you and you just kinda kinda roll with it and hopefully nothing gets tangled up or broken. So have we broken anything? No, I think I got some separated ribs. I don't think anything's broken, but I feel like a, a football team just beat me up. <laughs> and yet you managed to get back up and, and take another jump after that. Yeah, I did. Uh, just thank to, thanks to Dredlin and um, I just wanted to get back out and get that mental picture out of my head to crash and took a few jumps but today I'm feeling the pain and it'll be probably three four days before I get back well we hope to see you in Fort Lauderdale healthy I'll be there now Bruce Neville is on the water now last win on tour came in Fort Lauderdale last season an unprecedented resume at 36 years old and his great friend Marco Mira the golfer the Masters champion is riding in the boat watching this jump what a sensation it is when you can ride in this boat going backwards down the lake at 45 miles an hour and see that skier in a panoramic view come across through the wakes right here and then just launch. It is quite a view, as is this one, Bruce, the most experienced ski flyer in the field. And he got way out over the tips, Dave, and, and you talked about the advantage of doing that when you want to ride this wind that we have. Setting up now, you watch this counter cut getting way out wide on the driver's side of the boat so that he can come close to doubling his speed. Boat's 45. There goes 70 miles an hour off the top of the ramp for Bruce Neville. Well, that first jump was enough to land him in the lead spot on the leaderboard, but this one might be a touch longer. The turn is still slow and progressive. Bruce is a master of this kind of approach to the ramp. When his back is straight, he gets full extension. He got partial extension there. He's got more, but it's a good jump. He has spent 18 years as a professional water skier. Let's get some words from Bruce Neville. Bruce, talk to me a little bit about the headwind. Usually we think of this headwind as being a big, uh, uh, big help in ski flying. Is it today? Yeah, it's, it's, it is actually. It's settled down a lot, the wind. and uh, I didn't really get it all together there on any jump, and uh, I still went 251, so, you know, there's potential there for really big jumps, and I, I'm, you know, a little bit disappointed once again that I didn't get the one I wanted, so, 
you know, I was jumping good in practice, but I think uh, I think the boys next are going to be up around the 280s, 290s. Well, we did say the conditions would be challenging, and they have been so far. Neville, 251, the leader. Still to come, the Aussie Curtis Shears, the world ski fly champion in 99. The 2001 Mastercraft Pro Water Ski Tour is brought to you by 180 Energy Drink. Turn your energy around. Also by Mastercraft, the leader and pulling farther ahead. On right now, and in the boat when Neville was jumping was the great golfer Marco Mira. He's with Dave Benzel. Mark, it's a thrill, isn't it, to sit in the boat? You get a different perspective. It's unbelievable. I mean, it's really awesome to watch the speed that the guys get and the distance they're going today. It's it's incredible. I know one thing. You're not going to catch me doing that. <laughs> I think they might even go as high as a golf ball. I'll tell you what. They're, they're going at that ramp about as hard as Tiger Woods goes at a golf ball. So it's it's quite impressive. They're great athletes. Great to see Marco Mira out here hanging on the shore. Curtis Shears on the water now. His first effort. World Ski Fly Champ in 99. Second on tour last year in Detroit. That was about his best finish. Well, he has not won the whole enchilada ever. And he is so hungry for it. And coming back from uh, a season of good last year at the very end of the year he was jumping better than ever and I think that was a great confidence builder to set him up for this season this could be a guy to watch all year long and let's watch this jump right now coming in the ramp with lots of speed sitting back a little bit and that's not typical Curtis years he's really kind of face into the ramp he comes in upright ready to explode off the top. Very aggressive. He's got that thick body on him. It's, it's all about power for him. There's Emma Shears, his sister, a great skier in her own right, co-holder of the, of the world record in, on the women's side, and one of the few women who's gone over 200 feet in women's ski form, incidentally. Here's jump number two. And one was 244, so well shy of Bruce Neville's 251. Wow, you can hear the boat just accelerating during his cut to the ramp. Remember, as a skier plants those skis 90 degrees to the boat's path, the boat compensates to hold that 45 miles an hour. As the skier leaves the ramp, the boat takes off and runs down the lake. Here he comes. Look at the strain on his arms right now, hanging on. I mean, your eyes start to water at 70 miles an hour coming into the base of the ramp, and you're trying to hold everything together. That Mastercraft powered with that Vortec engine. Big horsepower to maintain the speed for ski flying, which the boat is in the neighborhood of 45 miles an hour. Curtis Shears, one foot better than the first jump, but still six feet shy of our leader, Bruce Neville. So a bummer for Shears. Freddy Krueger there talking things over with his coach and wife, Karen Truelove, last season's Pro Tour champion. He and the rest of the field aiming at a big prize this year. What's new for 2001? It is the Mastercraft Vortec Vault. The first jumper to get 322 feet in distance will win $100,000. They're calling it the 100-meter $100,000 challenge. Unprecedented. Oh, there's some incentive there. And these guys believe that that kind of distance is possible as they get more and more comfortable with the speed and, and jumping in the right conditions. In other words, this kind of headwind, although I'm surprised that they're not going farther today, though. Freddy Krueger, his first effort, last year's tour champion. Oh, he's so explosive off the top of the ramp. Quick legs, he just explodes off the top. Now, if he has the right speed, that always translates into big distance. The question is, does he have enough speed to go with the lift? Let's watch the approach. Coming in here, he's building massive speed and then edging in on that right ski into the bottom of the ramp. And you can see how quick his legs just catapult him up in the air and now go for the ride. Well, David, there's got to be a point at which the wind, and, and albeit today it is a bit gusty, where it's beneficial to a certain degree, but at some point it begins to knock you down a little bit there. Karen giving a few uh, few helpful hints for Freddie on the water. It, there's got to be that fine line where the wind is almost too much and, and then starts to work as a negative. Well, it's right. If it's too many miles per hour, it's holding you back. It's fighting you too much. Uh, oh, there's a, almost a stumble there by Freddie. But he wants to get up high enough and add float time. Numbers of seconds in the air is usually translated into distance. The 248, the first jump, and this one is certainly not going to be anywhere near where he's got to go. So Bruce Neville hanging on with 251 feet and nobody able to challenge so far. Uh, it's surprising. I'm not sure exactly if they're having trouble with the setup, and that's my guess. It's a, a relatively short lake. 
in order for a skier to build all the speed he needs, he has to cut from as far away as possible. And these guys are having trouble getting as wide on the boat as they would like to get, just because of the length of the lake. So Freddy Krueger, last year's season champion, will not begin with a win. But then again, he didn't last year. Let's get down and talk to him. Freddie, the 248-foot jump looked beautiful, and yet you're just coming down too soon. What's going on? No, it's crap. It's I'm not skiing well at all. I don't have my mind in. I got too many things on my plate right now, and I don't even deserve to be here. It's just terrible. And, and that really does play a major part in an athlete's performance. I mean, I know it's early in the season and everything else, but you got to have everything lined up right to be hitting this ramp at that speed. Yeah, and I just, I, I, I like to keep things real simple, and they haven't been. They're not going to be for a while, so I got to go home and start rethinking my strategy. Good luck. Thanks. We will see how things unfold through this season for Freddy Krueger. Still to come, a young man named Jason Seal. He will fly next. Is not having your high school diploma keeping you from making the money you want? With Professional Career Development Institute, you can earn your high school diploma at home without ever setting foot inside a classroom. And best of all, you can study at your own pace, go as fast or as slow as you want. Earning your high school diploma is just one of the many career training opportunities PCDI offers. Listen to these other exciting courses to choose from. Get your career diploma in medical transcription, paralegal, medical claims billing, bookkeeping, accounting, child daycare, computer training, private investigator, interior decorating, veterinary assistant, bridal consultant, medical dental office assistant, electrician, pharmacy technician, high school diploma, or get your associate degree in paralegal, accounting, business management, or criminal justice. Your future starts with a simple phone call, so call today for free career training literature. Call 1-800-652-0101 for free literature on the one course of your choice. My name is Oscar DeLoya. I've earned five world championship titles. But what I'm most proud of are the kids at my youth center. I believe in giving back. It's what I do in my community. And it's what the cable industry does with cable in the classroom. In schools everywhere, teachers use free cable technology to connect kids to commercial-free educational programs, study guides, and powerful internet support. For education, cable in the classroom is a winning combination. Cable in the classroom is a public service of ESPN2 and your local cable company. Welcome back to Orlando Men's Ski Fly Finals. It's all about the power in the boat. And with more, we'll send it down to one of the best jumpers around and the coach, Dave Benzel. When it comes to ski flying, the power plant in the boat is one of the most important components. We're looking at the Inmar Vortec 8100 V8 engine under this mighty big hood right here in this Mastercraft. It's the same engine that you would find in some GMC and Chevy trucks, except this V8 is more powerful than other trucks V10. Now, of course, what that really means is that the jumpers appreciate the power. And we have to go to Freddy Krueger, last year's tour champion, to find out what that really means in terms of performance. Well, Dave, uh, it's very important in ski flying that the jumper not out-jump the boat. We don't want to outrun the boat. You know, we, we generate a certain amount of speed. It's important that we don't pass the boat up or we'll drop out of the air. And with this boat and this engine, we finally have the potential for the boat to help pull us all the way down the lake, hopefully well over that 300-foot mark. So the boat has to give the power, but also the speed, so it doesn't shorten your jumps. And what you're saying is this year, that's happening. Who went together to make that happen? Well, it's just been an unbelievable effort by uh, Mastercraft, Inmar, and, and even OJ Props have come in, and the three of them have really come together. They, they kept it under a blanket, and uh, they just released it a couple weeks ago, and it blew my mind. And uh, just to make it even more exciting, they said, you know, we're not worried about 300 feet. We're going to put $100,000 out on a 322-foot jump. And I think it's possible. I, I really do. This boat is, is like nothing I've ever been behind. Uh, Freddie's talking about that Mastercraft Vortec vault money. Bruce Neville in these challenging conditions leading the field at 251. For that Vortec vault money, it's going to take optimum conditions. Exactly. And I don't know if we have them today or not. I asked Freddie also, can we go 270, 280 today? He goes, oh, yeah, we can. Well, Jason Seals, the next jumper to try to meet that challenge, 24 years old out of England. I love watching this guy become a ski flyer. Because when I watched him back on traditional six foot jumping at 35 miles an hour, I thought to myself, his body position and his approach to the ramp is perfect for ski flying. He's always had a very progressive cut. That progressive cut doesn't always serve you well for traditional jumping. Because uh, guys like Sammy DeVall, Bruce Neville have always attacked the ramp from the turn all the way to the ramp. 
Well, in ski flying, you start a little bit softer and build your speed all the way through the ramp, and that's what this guy does so well. He also has a very natural pop, a very natural, explosive push off the top, and you can see he's a pretty jumper. Guys who have good style tend to go far. The official distance, 239. Jason Seals, one more attempt to try and best Bruce Neville, our leader still at 251. Building tension on that rope right here. Watch this into the base. Ooh, this is a better jump, much better than that first one. And he knows it, too. And you look at the lake a little, Dave, and it looks like the wind may have laid down slightly for that jump. And it has been gusting, so that's possible. Watch the turn. Handle comes to the other hand very naturally and slowly, and then he just applies pressure all the way into the base of the ramp. Did you see the verticalness of his lift right at the at the takeoff edge of the ramp? Great form. Head is up, shoulders are up. Boom, he skis away from the boat all the way through the top of the ramp. Pretty float. Jason Seals way down the lake. He's dockside, let's talk to him. Jason, your jumping style, to me, looks like you're perfectly suited for ski flying. How much of an adjustment has it been for you to go from traditional six-foot jumping to ski flying? Um, it's not too much trouble. I mean, at the start of the season, I usually start at 40 mile an hour, just do an easy single cut. So to try and transition from that, it's not a big deal. It's just trying to stay really still before the ramp. And after that, it's all flying. Well, that great form Dave talked about makes Jason Seals our leader at 252. Now... We're set for Jared Llewellyn. A good luck kiss from the wife, and he's on the water next. There's no fuzz on this eagle. Donovan shaves with chunky soup. God! No, 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 no! Mom, we're That's making a commercial here. Donovan, chunky beef with country vegetables now has more beef. More lean beef to fill you up right. More is good. Mama. You can fill him up right after I fill my him up right. <laughs> Eat your oh. chunky baby. The Campbell's chunky beef foursome. Now with more beef. <laughs> Cal Ripken joins the 3000 Hit Club. Ready to go? Yeah. This just in. Cal Ripken and Tony Gwynn are not retiring. They're going to ESPN Classic. On Saturday, it's 10 hours of classic Ripken and Gwynn. From their greatest games to classic conversations. There was never a point where I felt that taking a day off was the right thing to do. Legends don't retire, they go to ESPN Classic. He's done it again! Classic Ripken and Gwynn, 11 Eastern Saturday, only on ESPN Classic. To get ESPN Classic, call 1-800-CLASSIC today. Welcome back to the Inmar Vortec Open. The first stop in the Pro Water Ski Tour for 2001, Jarrett Llewellyn, two times a world champion. Last season, he made every single final there was. And that's hard to do. This field, this kind of uh, talent that's there, it's getting real tough to be that uh, consistent. There's always somebody trying to pump you off. Whoa! -ho! Jared Llewellyn always attacks right from the get-go. Now, that, that's not our, our leading jump by any means, but you'll notice that he attacks the ramp right away. And he's got that progressive cut that you talked about, Dave, where he doesn't come out just, just full speed, but rather builds the speed to the ramp. Yeah, but in this case, if you saw him right before the ramp, he was getting stretched a little bit and turned open to the boat. And that's why this will not be a huge jump, but a warm-up jump. Now, Jarrett Llewellyn jump one with one to go. 243 on the board, so shy of our leader at 252 now. Jarrett in that big battle a season ago with Freddy Krueger. Freddy, of course, won the Tour Championship. Jarrett wants it back. Oh, there it is. And that's a huge one way down the lane. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He got a lot of that one. And his position before the ramp tells the tale. Watch how much more he has angled into the base of the ramp and holds it all the way through. Probably of, of, of all the skiers in the field, he cuts the hardest right here at the base of the ramp. And then his body didn't budge 
He just stayed perfectly still into the base and all the way through the flight. And to Mother Nature's credit, he was probably absent any gusts while he was flying as well. Yeah, but, but he has wind, which he wants. Correct. The wind helps uh, the headwind that the jumpers are facing today, helps with the lift and keeps them aloft. And oh, what a long float. Yeah, this is the biggest jump of the day. Let's talk to our new leader. Jared, your second jump is 22 feet farther than the jump before it. What was the difference? Because you were cutting into the bottom of the ramp on both those jumps. Well, the wind um, kind of started out where I left off yesterday. And I knew the wind was stronger, but really hard with the setup here to get up on the boat. And when the boat's going that fast, you just have a real hard time getting free of the boat. And a lot of guys just didn't jump on it right away. I said, geez, the next one, first two jumps are calmer than the last one. So I knew that I better throw it out there and cut really late off the six and try to get up on the boat. And I did a little snow plow. I thought I was running, but it worked out good because I was at least free on the boat. And I think that's the big difference between my first and my second one. So really the setup has been the key here today. Guys are struggling because they just aren't getting wide enough. Yeah, I think, you know, not having a lot of sets on the site and the whip style, you back off a little bit and ski flying when the boats run that fast you just can't do that it's just it's a no-no congratulations uh, you're leading right now with one skier to go yeah thanks i'm i'm happy thanks and that skier we're waiting on dave is kyle Eade from new zealand a year ago at this very same site he took fifth he will ski for the championship in orlando when we come back I should use Preparation H. Cool it fast with Preparation H Cooling Gel. Cools on contact for fast relief. Preparation H Cooling Gel cools on contact. This Sunday, a new generation quarterback takes center stage. The electrifying Donovan McNabb and his soaring eagles welcome Emmett Smith, who's rushing toward history. Cowboys, Eagles, 8.30 Sunday on ESPN. Joe, I'm telling you, this one is going to be huge. It's the MLB Pennant Series on ESPN. First at one. It's heating up in the National League East, Joe. We've got the Mets and the Braves in Atlanta. Piazza and the Mets try to keep their September resurgence alive as they take on the Braves in a huge must-win game at turn. Then at four, Tony Gwynn and the Padres square off against the Giants with Bonds just inches away from McGuire's record. Mets, Braves at one. Padres, Giants at four. Sunday Baseball presented by Nextel. Sunday on ESPN. The 2001 Mastercraft Pro Water Ski Tour is brought to you by Water Ski Magazine, the world's leading water ski publication. Also by Mastercraft, the leader and pulling farther ahead. Back in Orlando, Doug Dunbar along with the coach Dave Benzel, Jarrett Llewellyn sneaks one in, 265. He's our leader with one jumper to go. There's Jarrett talking about conditions out in the water. It's been breezy and somewhat gusty today, a challenge for everyone. And he made the point that it's not just cutting into the ramp, but it's hard to get up on the boat and get free of the boat for that turn that they need to go to the ramp. So all these pieces fit together. Let's watch how Kyle Eve manages. He had the longest jump in the preliminary round. And now that puts him in the number one seated position. The hunched over shoulder style and a fairly good float for Eve, but not the 265 he needs. And mostly because he didn't have the speed. He's drifting back on the boat right now. He's just a little bit narrow. Kyle Eade has adjusted very well to ski flying. It's taken him a year or two, but, but he's had enough time on the, on the ramp and with this speed to start to get used to it. You'll see he's got nice lift, but he's dropping out of the sky because he doesn't have the speed to carry him farther down the course. Kyle Eade, one down, one to go, 249. Well shy of the 265 that Jarrett Llewellyn holds. One last chance, and the skis are chattering. Here comes the turn. Again, he drifted back a little bit. Good lift, good lift. And it's, it's almost like he tried to compensate for falling back on the boat with the kick off the top. Yeah, that's right. So he's got the lift, height, but not enough speed. 
Kyle Eade does not have enough distance. Jared Llewellyn, a kiss from wife Britta, the champion here in Orlando. Let's talk to him. Jared, congratulations. Start off the season with a win. Yeah, do better than that. Um, I don't know what to say. Just uh, everybody's been jumping on unreal. Uh, the boat feels unreal. Hats off to Mastercraft and Inmar for, you know, they did, you know, Craig Kraft's been pushing the sport really hard, and Inmar just come right back and stepped it up. And uh, distances didn't show it this weekend, but I think conditions and yesterday, you know, guys just weren't settled yet. So by next weekend in Fort Lauderdale, I think guys will be on the game. Freddie won the season last year, had a great year, so obviously there'll be a big shootout between the two of you, and he got off to a, a rough start today. Yeah, I mean, Freddie's, we've been jumping together in practice with Bruce, and uh, he's banging him out there, you know, 300s, and, and it makes you nervous. So that happens. I mean, it happened to me last year. You, you, it's too early, and uh, he's, he's just unreal. He's the one to watch, so. We're going to see 300 this year? I think so. I think when guys get settled and we get the conditions right, 300 is going to go down. It's going to be a great battle to watch. Next time we talk to you, it's going to be May 2nd, 5.30 Eastern, May the 8th, 10 p.m. Pacific, both on ESPN2. From Orlando, the 180 energy drink jump of the day belongs, of course, to Jared Llewellyn. Jared just putting it all together there, the right combination of speed and lift. He was the one who figured out the setup here in Orlando, and it paid off with a winning jump. Thank you, HFA.